Hello everyone and welcome back to our final episode of our pushable block series. So far we've made our block pushable but it kind of looks weird, our character just sliding alongside it. So let's now change it up and add some animations to our character. So we're going to go through the process of how to add animations and how they can be used in conjunction with our pushable block to make it look more authentic. So let's go through that process and make it look better. So for the final part here, I've brought in some animations, which you can see I've brought in here. We've got push end, push idle, push loop, and push start. And I'm going to use these as part of my animation. So first thing I'm going to do in these ones, because these have got root motion on them, I'm going to lock them down. So I'm going to go to force root lock on each one of these. So push start is force root lock, push loop, force root lock, idle, lock, and end lock. Close that. Uh, close to. Right, on these animations here, we're going to go to push start and create a montage for this. So create any montage. Push montage. And open this up. So for push start, we're going into here and playing this animation. So push start is going to happen here first. And then we're going to go into the asset browser and put in push uh, loop into there. So now I'll just do the loop bit here. But it won't loop it yet. So to make it loop, we're going to add a section to it. So right click in the sections track, which is the top one, and we'll call this one loop. And we'll just position it correctly. There we are. And but then we want the end also going there too. Again, give it a section. End. Like so. Okay, so to make the loop part loop, you want to go to your montage sections. If you don't see this window, head over the window and turn on montage sections. And your default loop and end are going to be all connected to each other. For now, just hit clear and it will get rid of all of them and then make more separate animations. So default, which is the start, is going to go into loop. So click on the little uh, square icon here and choose loop. But loop, when it finishes, is going to go back to loop. So hit loop again and it will change color and indicate this looping icon. So it's going to loop the loop. And end will make sure it's on its own. So if I'm previewing this and I push play, the character goes into here and starts pushing. OK. Now, what's important about this is that we need to know when the pushing actually starts, because we don't want the box to start moving when it's doing this bit. Um, that doesn't make sense, doesn't look right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a montage notifier about here right at the start. So I'm going to right click on notify track and notify montage notify. And I'm just going to put that, I'll just put it there, that'd be fine. And we'll give it a name if you want. Um, begin moving. Cool. Um, it's not a big deal. And hit save on that. And then we're going to go over to our uh, pushable block. And on the pushable block, we've got over on when we hit it, this can push being done, and then it's doing all of this stuff and then doing the push here. Before it calls the push function to start the push, we need to do it to play the animation montage. So we're going to get the player character again, get their mesh, and we're going to do play montage. And we're going to plug in our push montage. The push here would happen on the notify begin. So put that there. Okay. Righto, so that will do that. But there's gonna be a slight issue with this. Uh, let's see if you can spot it. So if I go to push it, animation goes, great. So first issue, we click through it. Second issue, the animation montage restarts as I'm pushing because the, the push is still going on. Um, so I don't want to do play montage if it's already playing the montage. So I get this mesh here. I'm going to get the anim instance of it. And I'm going to see if it's playing montage. Is playing. Um, any montage is playing. And I'll put that into a branch. And do this. False. Go and play montage. If it's true and we are already moving, we just want to do push and keep pushing. 
I'll tell you, let's start again. It's going to keep looping the montage until we tell it not to. So let's see if that's working there as intended. So go back to this. We should say start the motion. Uh huh. Let the push happen there too quick. We need to stop that from doing that. Uh, let's just go into there. Um, so I think what we need to do on this push here is have it do a uh, a, a do uh, a gate on it maybe. So not if I begin, we have a gate happening. In fact, I'll put that after this push here. If I begin gate, and the gate exit is going to go into push. This push here from the not if I begin is going to go to open the gate. Now going to there. Let's try that again. As I say we're trying to delay the push until it's finished the animation. There we go. So obviously, yeah, we're clipping through it. We'll fix that in a second. But if I let go of it, we want it to stop playing the animation because obviously it's still playing this animation. Okay, so now we've got to make it so that when we come, when we stop, we come out of the montage. So let's go over to our push for object again. Let's go over to stop pushing. And stop pushing, we're going to tell it to get a player character, get its mesh, and I'm going to say play montage. And we're going to choose our same montage, but this time we're going to give it a different section name, uh, which is called end in this case, because we that's what we made it be called in our montage here, end. So that will go into there. And when it's finished and completed doing that, so completed then, we'll go to set movement mode. Now, one issue we'll have with this is that this is going to get called uh, multiple times because after the time has finished, before it goes on, it's going to start pushing again. And therefore, we're going to see it trigger it playing the end of that animation before it goes into push again. So demonstrate what I'm talking about. I'll go to push. you see it do this sort of motion, which is not what we want. So what you're going to do is we're going to check to see if our input key is still held down at the point of when the timeline is finished. So in here, you're going to do get player controller. And from there, you can get input key down. And you check if a particular key is being held down. In this case, I'm looking at W. Now, if you've got other multiple, if you've got multiple inputs for moving forwards, uh, include them all in here too. Just put another input key down, check it all out and put an and in, or or for all, all these, sorry. Um, each one of these. So we'll put that into a branch and we'll put that into finished. And if it's not held down, so it's false, we want to stop pushing. However, if it is true, we want it to push again. So we're going to go call it to push again. So do push to call the push function there. So let's now go uh, to there. I'm actually going to put the begin moving here a little bit before the loop begins, I think, actually. I think. And let's now go into there. And I can now push continuously and let go. And I'll stop pushing. So we've got two things to fix. One is our feet. Like if you ever notice our feet, the control rig is locking our feet down. Um, so there's that to fix. The other issue was obviously the collision with our character's head going through it. Now, the reason why the character's head's going through it is dependent entirely on your animations you've got. In my case, the animations are uh, rooted in a weird, not a weird place, but just an unfortunate place. So if I go to the push loop here, the root of the character is here, meaning that he is stretched out wider than the capsule is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the size of the capsule while he's doing the push. And when he goes back to standing, we'll change the size capsule back. There's that one. So let's go do that first of all. So on a pushable object, we're going to go up to where we're doing the attach actor to actor and all this stuff here. We're going to just move that along like so. Get the character. And from there, get the capsule component. And from that, we're going to do set radius. And we're going to set the capsule radius. And we're going to set it to 
don't know, 65. We'll try that. It starts off at 35, so we'll just almost double it there. And then bring that down to the rest of it here. But we do want to set it back down to 35 when we finish moving. So go back to down to stop pushing, get capital, and then get the capital component. And set its radius back. to 35 compile okay let's see if that's fixing that issue uh, somewhat still causing issues there uh, let's take a look and see what's going on there with our character uh, let's go to our character's blueprint and turn on the capital components visibility in the game. So we should see it change size. Yeah, it does, uh, but the collision of it hasn't been updated to reflect the new position of where they should be. So we just need to move them a bit back, I think, from that position there. So if I take the third person character, here, sorry, pushable object here, and move them slightly back. We can do set capital radius here. We'll do move component two. And we're going to move the capital component. And the relative location is its current location. So get location, get world location from that. But we're going to add a backward offset to it. So what we're going to do from that is going to get the active forward vector of our player character. Get actor forward vector. And we are going to uh, multiply this by a float. Now, if you want to go forwards more, you give it a positive number. If you want to go backwards, I give it a negative number. So I'm going to go negative uh, 30. And I'm going to add that onto the world location there. Like so the relative rotation is going to be the same rotation this capsule component has. So just do that, get world rotation and just plug it in. Yeah. And the time you want it to take 0.2 is default. You can tweak this to make it faster, slower, whatever you want to do. We're going to leave it at 0.2 and see how that looks first of all. But that should move our character. Oh, not there. Uh, where are they gone? Let's work that back here. Uh, the think the problem may well be is that I've attached it before I've moved it. So we'll just do the attachment afterwards, I think. So we'll just do that bit after the move two's done its job. The reason why is because the relative positioning is relative to its parent. And if it has no parent, the world is the parent. So I don't want it to be the case here. I want it after it's moved it like that uh, in fact I'm just going to tie this up and just give by a character there instead there you go save dragging a line across the whole thing there okay let's just check that out see if that's fixed that problem yep there you go and I've moved my character back now and it's looking a lot better but the feet are the only issue left now and the reason why that's the case is because in Unreal 5, the setup for the character's animation, if I go and show you it, is on animation graph here, is the control rig. And the montage is playing before the control rig here. So the reason why you're seeing that is because the control rig is on this side of the default slot. I'm just going to move that default slot to the other side for simplicity. And that in there so that happening after the foot placement's been adjusted so therefore it should override it so now we should get a fully looking a lot better and there you go and the character can now run around still and do all the jobs they need to do 
And there we go, we've now finished our pushable block. We've got a really nice pushable block with some good animations that really sell us pushing this block around. And as I said before, we can tweak the uh, values inside of it to make it go for longer, be uh, take slower pushes, things like that. You can fully tweak those if, based upon what kind of things you are pushing around. But we just have a play with the different things we've done here and take what you've learned here forwards. If you like what I do and want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where a donation from just $1 a month gets access to all my video content early before everyone else. Thank you so much for watching this series. Hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment, like the video, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already have done so. And I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.